Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yeah. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. We are so glad to have you with us. Thank you for joining us on Jesus the Healer. And we're believing, God, that you're going to get answers today, that you're going to receive light for your situation. And you say, well, Pastor Nancy, I'm not facing a situation. Well, you will sometime. <laughs> so uh, we're going to stock the shelves for you. How about that? Um, I've taken different times throughout my teaching on our episodes here on Jesus the Healer. And I've referred to when my husband went home to be with the Lord and how our family, how our congregation handled that. And uh, so I just thought we would take a series here and just teach on that because we want you to know that there is victory assigned to every season of your life. Victory belongs to every season of your life. And when it looks like things have gone dramatically the wrong direction, never give up your victory because still victory belongs to you. And so what we have to do, though, to cooperate with that victory is we have to think in line with the word. We have to respond in line with the word. Because we can know what the word says and not respond in line with that word. So that's where we grow in skill. And as we mature, our response comes more and more in line with God's word. Amen. Um, I'm, going, I'm teaching out of my book called Victory Over Grief and Sorrow. And as I've said in the past is that the emphasis is not grief and sorrow. It's victory. It's victory. And uh, we have to think right, though, so we can experience that. Yeah. Grief and sorrow doesn't just enter or try to enter someone's life and when someone goes home to be with the Lord, right. but just when maybe a business is lost, sure. a home is lost, yeah. a relationship uh -huh. doesn't work out right. as intended. And those things can be a heartbreak. Yeah. And the devil will take those times of transition yeah. and try to work his grief and sorrow yeah into the lives of people. And when I talk about grief and sorrow, I'm not saying that it's wrong to weep over a situation because Jesus himself is touched with the feelings yes. of our infirmities. Right. But know this, he's not entrenched in those feelings. Amen. We are touched by the feelings of things, but we're not to get entrenched in a flow that is opposite of what God offers us. Yes. We're not to get entrenched in a flow of grief and sorrow to where it starts coloring our life and, and paints it dark. And so anyway, this is what we're talking about. And we're just glad to share this with you because what I've learned at those times, I want, I want to pass it on so that someone doesn't have to struggle. Maybe, uh, and, and two, we want to give you an example that works. Because we have examples in this, in this world. We have examples all around us that th those examples don't work. They just don't work. <laughs> you know, people are still struggling. They're doing something. Now I want to do what they're doing if it don't work. And so when we work the word, the word always works. Amen. And, and I'm talking about for us. It works all the time, but not for us unless we work it. And so it was on Friday, October the 18th in 2013 that my children came to the house and told me that my husband's plane had gone down. Um, but the Holy Spirit was in front of that yeah. in the sense of he was preparing me and my family yes. for that. And um, two years before, he said, all I want you doing is practicing peace. So he's telling me that was to be the emphasis of my daily life. Pay attention. Yeah. If a thought didn't lead me to peace, resist it. If a thought troubled me, answer it. Yes. Amen. Because what we don't resist has the permission to stay. Yes. And it will if you let it. 
And so I, I did that as faithfully as I knew how to. And it, what it did, it arrived me in a flow of the Spirit. That's really a flow of the Spirit is walking in peace. When you uh, allow the fruits of the Spirit that are on the inside of every believer to, to grow and to dominate, you draw on those. As if we could say you pick that fruit and you eat it and you find yourself in the flow of God. And no matter what tragedy shows up, the flow of God still belongs to you. Still belongs to you. So that day, I was so grateful that the Spirit of God had prepared me by teaching me how to um, draw on peace, how to protect the flow of peace. And I decided that peace flow is so great. Uh, Peace is not just a feeling, it's a force. It's a divine flow. It's a force. Yes. And uh, so in that, it protected me in that right flow. And I decided I'm not coming out of that flow. Yes. I'm not coming out of that flow. Because grief and sorrow will offer you a flow, but it's not a flow you want. Amen. And so I wanted to start, we, we left off on the previous episode reading out of Philippians chapter four. And we want to, I want to go back to that. Philippians chapter four, verse six, the Amplified Classic Translation, because we have to make sure that we're cooperating with the word that comforts us. The word is our comfort. The Holy Spirit is a comforter. God may comfort you through other people, but when we take his words and believe them and hold to them and act on them, uh, we're going to arrive at the, at the best place. Amen. Amen. So we have, to, we have to do what the Word says if we're going to benefit mm-hmm. from the Word. Yeah. So we have to look at, let's look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, and purpose to be doers of it. Uh, again, the Amplified Classic, it says, Do not fret, do not period. Fret. Don't fret. Yeah. Don't worry. Or have any anxiety about anything. Now, I'm going to ask the studio audience here because they know the answer to this. How do you know if you're worrying? If you're thinking about it. If you're thinking about it. Do not think about it. You know, when it says do not fret, it's saying do not think about something that could trouble you. Think about, realize this, you're authorized not to think about some things. Just because something shows up doesn't mean you have to think about it. We're authorized not to think about certain things. Do not fret or have any anxiety, look at this, about anything. Anything, anything, anything. But in every circumstance, in everything by prayer, and we say this by talking to God, prayer is talking to God. Why does he have to remind us to talk to God? Because most of us run to talking to people. (laughs) It's not wrong to talk to people, but don't eliminate talking to God first. So uh, in every circumstance and in everything, by prayer, by talking to God and petition, making definite requests with thanksgiving. See, we're thanking him because he hears us and he's moving in our behalf when we talk to him about it. Continue to make your wants known to God. Look at verse 7. And God's peace shall be yours. That peace that transcends. This is how to activate the peace that's in you. It's not that he all of a sudden sends peace. It was in you. But when you do verse 6, then you're able to draw on the peace that's in you and it's able to have the the dominant flow in your life. So, and God's peace shall be yours. It'll come into manifestation. It'll come into prominence. Uh, God's peace shall be yours. And that peace, it transcends all understanding. It's beyond what your mind can reason. It'll transcend all understanding. It shall garrison or be like a military troop guarding. Guarding and mount, it'll mount guard over your hearts. Look at this, and your minds in Christ Jesus. You know, thank God for the peace in our hearts, but God authored for peace for our minds too. Look at verse eight. Now this is a, this is a clincher too. You can't leave out verse eight. Yes. Uh-huh. He says, for the rest, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is worthy of reverence and is honorable and seemly and just and pure and lovely and lovable, meaning something can be true, but if it's not lovely, then we can't touch it. It's a thought has to meet all these requirements. All of these descriptive adjectives, right? 
So whatever is lovely and lovable, whatever is kind and winsome and gracious, if there's any virtue and excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think on. Uh He's talking about telling you what to do with your mind. Mm -hmm. Think on and weigh and take account of these things. Fix your minds on them. Fix, 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 fix fix your mind on this. Meaning your mind's going to want to go somewhere else. Uh Uh-uh, bring it back. Fix it. Uh Fix it. (laughs) Put it back where it belongs. Put it back in place. It has to be, it has to meet the guidelines of these descriptive words and verses. Verse 6, 7, and 8 has to, has to line up. Verse 9, Paul goes on and he says, practice what you have learned. Practice what you've learned. Everything that your pastors taught you, everything that men of God have taught you, all the sermons you've listened to, all the Bible reading you've done, practice it. Don't lay it aside and say, yeah, I know all about that. Practice. Then Paul says, practice what you have learned and received. How many of you know you can't practice what you didn't receive? Practice what you have learned and received. Look at this and heard and seen in me. So it does matter who you're taking as your tutor. (laughs) It does matter who you've set yourself under. It does matter. It does matter who you allow to speak into your life. It does matter what voice you value. Because you might love someone, but that doesn't mean they're skillful in what you need. That's right. So Paul said, the things you've seen in me, you've heard it from me, you've seen it in me. He said, now learn learn, and follow that as an example. He says, model your way of living on it. Mm. Now, when's he talking about? He's not just talking about we follow this when everything's in place in our life. We, this is our model of how we're going to conduct our lives and our thought lives every day in the midst of circumstances and trials. This is in the book of Philippians, right? This passage. Paul wrote the book of Philippians. Anybody know where he's at? Prison. He's in prison. He's telling us what he's doing in prison. He says, I'm practicing what I'm telling you to practice. Amen. He said, you've seen this in me. And he says, no, you practice this. He's telling them in prison, I'm keeping my mind on whatever is true, whatever is worthy, whatever is lovely, whatever is just, what's pure. That's what he's doing with his mind in that place of prison. He's not saying, he's not writing from a place of everything's hunky-dory and cherries are on top of everything right now. In the natural, circumstances are heightened around him. Opposition is great against him. And he says, and this is how I'm living. This is good stuff. I'm just telling you. (laughs) Because you would think that what you're facing calls for, uh, if I could say this, panic. Uh, Drama. (laughs) No, no, we don't need any of that because we've got this offered us. So again, Paul says in verse 9, practice what you've learned and received and heard and seen in me. And model your way of living on it. And the God of peace, of untroubled, undisturbed well-being will be with you. How can he say that? Because he says he's with me. Yes. I'm doing this and I'm receiving that flow of peace. If you'll do what I'm doing, you'll receive the same flow. And I'm telling you, that's what I did. That's what I did. In that flow of emergency, that's what I did. Some people, as I said, some people derive their comfort from telling over and over and over again about their tragedy. And I'm not belittling what's happened to people, but that's not the source of comfort by telling it and telling it. And people get rutted in operating that way. But you have to want something different to draw on something different. I want peace. I don't want to just have a story to tell. (laughs) I want peace. Amen. Hallelujah. So we have to refuse to entertain anything that Paul is telling us to stay away from. Amen. Now, 
a couple of weeks before my husband went home to be with the Lord, I, I remember so many times driving down the road and up in my spirit would come these words, in the presence of God, you'll weep. And I'm just driving down the road. And these, this phrase kept coming up time and time again. I didn't know what it was referring to, but I noted it. See, pay attention. When the Holy Ghost is saying something to you, he's going to say it to you before the need shows up. Why? Because he's, he puts you in front of situations like that. So when he said that to me, in the presence of God, you'll weep. It didn't mean anything specific to me at that time, but I noted it. So the day my husband went home to be with the Lord, and yes, I wept, but it wasn't in sorrow and grief. It was his presence. That's what I remembered. Ah, oh, those oh, weepings, yes. they're coming from here. Yes. They're not coming from uh, the, the, a stress of a moment. Yes. They're not coming because I'm thinking about that my husband isn't here anymore. His presence is so strong that the weepings, and I go, ah, that's why he kept saying to me, in the presence of God, you'll weep. He wanted me to know I'm weeping because the presence of God was there to comfort and strengthen and fortify. I wasn't weeping because I'm considering my setting and I'm weeping over a uh, that my husband isn't here. I wasn't weeping over that. I was weeping at his presence. So what did I do when the we see if you think you're weeping over the situation, you'll keep replaying the situation over and over in your head. So I recognized, wait, that's his presence. So you know what I did? I turned and worshiped him. That's what I did. And it kept, if I could say this, it was like a barrier, a protection around my mind. I could not even conjure up a worried thought because his presence had already filled the space. So in the presence of God, you'll weep. Don't think that every time something dramatic happens in your life and you start weeping, don't always think that, it, that is that the event or is that his presence there to comfort me? In the presence of God, you will weep. Haven't you done that? You go to a church service. And there's nothing going on. There's nothing out of place in your life. There's nothing going on in your life dramatic. And the presence of God is so sweet. The anointing of God is so strong. And you'll sit and weep in that presence. Are you weeping because something's bad? No, it's because something's sweet. Right? God wants to bring the same thing to every difficult situation, every tragedy. He brings his sweetness to it. And that comes through his presence. So I told my children the same thing. I got up the next Sunday and said to the congregation, because see, the Spirit of God's going to comfort the congregation too. And they'll sense weepings of His presence, the weepings that come because you sense His presence. I didn't want them to get in the middle of the arena and think that they're weeping over the event. I'm not telling you it's wrong to weep over an event. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying don't assume that all weepings are event uh, directed. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Their presence and God directed. Mm. Amen. Amen. So anytime those weepings would come, I'd start worshiping God. That's his presence coming. To, that's his presence coming to comfort me. Oh, yeah. Coming to, if I could say this tangibly, yeah. abide. Yeah. He's not picking up his luggage and leaving then. <laughs> no. he, he's making himself more known more known. Amen. But like I said, if people don't recognize the comfort of his presence and that they're weeping at the sensing of his presence, they'll just think, oh, I'm really getting under that grief and sorrow. And you'll open the door to grief and sorrow. You will open the door to grief and sorrow if you handle it emotionally and handle it mentally. The devil will say, see, you're weeping over that. You, you, you're really, no, 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 I'm worshiping God. It's his presence I sense. It's not sorrow I sense. It's not grief I sense. It's him I sense. And then you just occupy yourself with him. And for weeks, that's what I did. Worshiped and worshiped and worshiped. And I didn't have to ask very many questions. You want to know why? In his presence, I heard my answers. In his presence, answers flowed. 
I didn't have to sit and make a list of answers in his, um, a list of questions rather for him to answer. What am I going to do about this? What am I going to do about that? The more I stayed in his presence, the plan is in his presence. The help is in his presence. The answers are in his presence. I stayed in his presence. That's why I spent hours and hours just worshiping God, not figuring out anything, not calling people for counsel. Yes, people called me. They were very kind. They were very kind and I appreciated it, but I didn't call up a bunch of people for answers. Why? The answers were flowing in his presence. That's why one, time, one of the reasons the devil wants to draw you in the mental arena because he knows there's no answers for your future there. He, he wants you to miss hearing the answers that will flow from being in the presence of God. He wants you to miss that. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Well, we're learning. I said, we're learning. We're learning. Um, I want to, before I go any further, I, I may go further with teaching. I don't know. We'll see. We're coming close to the, uh, the time ending on this broadcast. But right where you're at today, mm-hmm. I want to help you. Maybe you can say, Pastor Nancy, I had an event, a tragedy, a crisis, maybe a year ago, two years ago. And now you're helping me locate how God was trying to help me. You can look back and you say, you know, now that, I, I meant, now that you mentioned that, I realized, yes, the presence of God was tangible, yes. but I went the wrong direction. Yes. I flipped over to that mental arena and I started out of my emotions, letting my emotions lead me. And I just opened the door to that grief and sorrow. And I have felt the void, the vacancy of that person being here. Well, you know, you say, well... Because you'll hear people say, and I'm talking about people in the world, not talking about people in the church, but I'm talking about people in the world who have faced a tragedy and they say, you know, I, uh, there's nothing that can fill that void of that person being gone. There is too. Oh, yes, yes, there, there is. is. Jesus makes you whole. Yes. He will not leave you with empty places in your life. And when someone is no longer there who used to be there, you don't have to live with that ongoing sense of they're gone. Mm. They're gone. Mm. And I miss them so much. Yes, you miss them, but you don't miss them in a troubling way. It doesn't trouble you. And I just want you to know whether it's a child, whether it's a family member, whether it's a spouse, whether it's just a friend, as someone who's no longer there, you do not have to feel like your life has a hole in it yes, and that there's an emptiness Mm -hmm. there. No, if you will turn toward him, he will fill it with himself. And he doesn't try to replace that person with another person. It's not wrong for a person to have occupied a special place in your heart that no one else feels. No one else needs to feel it. But God will fill the vacancy. That there's not this sense of missing something. Amen. Amen. Well, those of you, you may say, well, I'm just, you're describing some of the things I've gone through. Or maybe you're entrenched in a flow of grief and sorrow. I want you to know it can change now. Amen. Right now. Right now. You don't have to drag your way back out of that, but you can sense it. You can turn and, and sense his presence right now and his help right now. Amen. So if you say you're talking to me, then I want you to reach your hand towards the screen. And as you do, release your faith. Receive from God. Mm -hmm. Receive the power of God. And I'm going to stretch my hand and the the audience here, we're going to all release our faith with you over your situation. We're here for you. We want you to receive the comfort that God's made yours. Amen. So Satan, I tell you, you take your hands off their mind. You take your hands off their family. You take your hands off their business, off their home, off their children, off their life in Jesus name. Father, we thank you for the divine force of peace and it's on the inside of them. And we thank you, Father, that you strengthen them with might in their inner man so that they will draw on that force of peace that's in them. And we, we, we call for that peace to flow in Jesus' name. And we say that the peace of God mounts guard over their hearts. 
It mounts guard over their minds yes. and they will sleep sweet yes. and they won't be harassed yes. in their sleep. They won't be troubled in relationships. Mm -hmm. The troubling of relationships that has happened because, uh, because people held to the wrong thing. Yes. They didn't let the past drop. Yep. And they carried, if I could say this, luggage, baggage uh -huh. into other relationships, mm -hmm. left over from other heartache. Yes. Be free from that in oh, Jesus' oh, name. Oh, May your home be sweet. May yes. your marriage be yes. sweet. May it be a new beginning yes. for you. Yes. May it be a new start yes. in your life. Yes. May God, um, if I could say this, recover the days for you. Yes. May he restore years. Yes. May he restore weeks and months and days into your life. Yes. And may he restore anything and everything that's lost because he intends that you live whole, whole in every way. I'm not just talking physically, but nothing of your life lacking, nothing of your life have a void or a hole in it, but God fills it with his best. In Jesus' name, you receive it. And right where you're at, you just say, I receive that. I receive it, I receive it. And you order your thinking. You order your thought life in line. And if you recognize that you've been allowing your thoughts to go the wrong direction, uh, take charge of those thoughts. Yes. Yes. Bring those thoughts back in line with the word of God. Yes. Amen. And you have divine help of the Holy Ghost to do that. Yes. You're not doing it by willpower. The Holy Ghost yes. is your helper. Yes. You do it by the help of the spirit. Yes. And if I could say this, one of the best things to do, just start worshiping. Yeah. Worship, yes. worship, 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 worship God because in his presence, you hear your answers. Amen. We want to remind you, I've been teaching out of my book, Victory Over Grief and Sorrow. You can go to our website and purchase your copy today. It's at DufresneMinistries.org and we'll get it right out into your hands. And until next time, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. In the book, Victory Over Grief and Sorrow, Nancy Dufresne shares from firsthand experience how even death is no match for the mighty force of peace that is available to every believer. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. God offers you His thoughts. Take them. This life-changing book by Nancy Dufresne, A Sound, Disciplined Mind, will instruct you on how to do that. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. Come join us for our Dufresne Ministries Miracle Crusade in Ontario, Canada at Promise of Life Church, August 27th through the 31st. For more information and to register, visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org. Come expecting miracles. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible. have a job to do in the body of Christ. It's a new day of stepping into places in the Spirit that will bring us into a greater flow. They call for anything else but to help people. A fresh momentum that hits a stride. What is the job of the body of Christ? It's to set people free, get people healed, get people saved. Can you say amen? Hitting a stride in the spirit realm, in healing, and in gifts of healings. This is Pastor Nancy Dufresne, President of Dufresne Ministries. I want to extend an invitation to you to become a partner with Dufresne Ministries today. 
The vision of Dufresne Ministries is to move with the Word and the Spirit as we bring the message of faith and God's healing power to this generation. Partnership is a two-way street. We commit to bring the uncompromised Word of God to you, and you can, by faith, become a partaker of the grace upon this ministry. Then our partners bring their prayer and support. If you receive from this ministry and have been blessed by it, please pray about becoming a partner today. God bless you. Some of the arms of the ministry that you'll support include a traveling ministry with crusades and conferences held nationwide and abroad, the printing and publishing of books, CDs, and DVDs to get this message out, Fresh Oil Fellowship, a ministerial organization for the encouragement of five-fold ministers who desire to flow with the Word and the Spirit, TV and other media broadcasts, that reach various parts of the world. Our Jesus the Healer television broadcast is currently on six different networks, potentially reaching 329 million households. Benefits you receive from partnership include a 20% discount on all Dufresne Ministries products, a monthly partner letter from Nancy Dufresne, consistent ministry updates and communication, and the prayer of agreement with our partners. Be a part in carrying out the vision. Pray about becoming a legacy partner today. For more information, go to our website at defrainministries.org.